Welcome back to some more content that you probably thought you wouldn't see on this channel. What are you doing, car? Please don't get in my lane. All right, good. Anyways, um, tonight I'm on my Triumph 1200 XC Scrambler. I've got about 100 horsepower, about 80 foot-pounds of torque, or 89 foot-pounds of torque. Enough for me. This is my street bike, and uh, has a completely different feel compared to my KTM and um, the sound. The sound is is what it's all about. I got the dual pipe aero exhaust. Um, you know, this is just, you can go off road with it, but it's all about the style and the feel of riding. It's real open air. There's no windshield right here. So it's all, it's all about the, I don't know, the, the style factor and uh, the sound. It's also a little bit, a bit more freestyle in the handling. Um, but anyways, this is probably my favorite bike right now. So I wanted to talk about one of the comments I made on the video where there's a bunch of millennials quitting their six-figure jobs and I put the comment that said we don't want perks we want more money and we want autonomy and obviously there was outrage from that and there were a bunch of people in the comments that just don't seem to understand um, purchasing power um, they're like I take six figures here in my country and it's like yeah, but you don't get six figures in your country you have to you have to live where they say where the cost of living is really high and then your six figures doesn't mean that much uh, unless of course you're making an obscene amount of money but it's it's people always compare the amount of money they see people in america being paid to where they live with their cost of living uh, of course of course a hundred thousand dollars in, in a low cost of living country is going to make you a millionaire but you don't get that you don't get to have six figures in a low cost of living area. You have to live in the high cost of living. That's why you get paid six figures. So I think what a lot of people need to start doing is, is thinking about these salaries that they see in terms of percentages. Like what percentage of this salary goes to your rent? What percentage of this salary goes to your food? How much is food compared to other areas? There were a few comments that were calling me greedy because I said, I want more money and more autonomy, I don't want more perks. And you see all these comments saying, how much more money do you want? You're already making so much money. And it's like, how am I greedy as the worker? Like, look at a CEO. If, if you think I'm greedy as a worker because I want more money, look at CEOs. Why am I being guilted? Why am I being shamed as a worker for wanting, you know, a bit more of the profit that I generate the company? But that's not right. Like, look at CEOs when they fire people and refuse to hire replacements for those and just lay those responsibilities on other people. Like, they're, they're cost-cutting measures everywhere so that they can save money and make more profit. But I, as the worker, am greedy because I want more money. I want a little bit more of my total value, right? Because you have to remember, your total value as an employee is your salary plus whatever profit you're making them. Right, and they're trying to get a, a, as big of a margin on that as they can. If they're paying you 100,000, chances are you're making them 200,000. So they're still making 100,000 profit on that. And you wanting a little bit more of your total worth isn't greedy. I just, I just don't get it. Obviously, there's a certain point where money stops affecting your life that much, but. Like if it was a ball pit and a slide or more money, I'd take more money. And I don't think I'm greedy for that when companies buy you these perks and things and these gift cards and on-site things. They're tax deductions for the company. They reduce the overall amount of money that the company has to pay tax on at the end of the year. So it's easier for them to do that than give that money out to the employees because when they do that, right, that's payroll tax. So. Financially, it makes sense for companies to buy perks instead of giving that money to employees. But the bottom line is, I don't think I'm guilty for wanting more money. This is the whole point of a business, is to generate as much profit as possible. At least, through the eyes of your CEO, that's what they're thinking. But you as the worker, you think about wanting more money and suddenly you're greedy. Or you'll see some of the comments in there that say, you're privileged, this, this comes down to privilege. I make 300 euros a month or something. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you should want more money too. Like you should want as much as you can get 
and that sounds really bad, but also, if you're working a job, you're never going to get your full worth because they won't hire you unless you're making them more money than they're paying you. That's the whole point of having a worker. <laughs> so you should always want as much money as you can get, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what CEOs are doing. It's literally, oh my god, it smells like cow poo. Ugh. Ugh. How's it going? Caribou, whatever. The exhaust pipe next to my leg gets a little hot, but it's still worth on a cool evening like this. It's nice. It's not too hot. Midday, where it's like 107 degrees out, yeah, then the exhaust pipe on your leg gets a little annoying. But still, you can just angle your leg out. You don't even feel it. Hear that? It's not a Harley per se, but damn, it sounds good. You know, on my KTM, I've never actually maxed out the throttle. I'm too much of a, too much of a baby <laughs> to try because it kicks really hard. It has a lot of torque. But on this bike, I can max out the throttle fairly easy without feeling like I'm going to fly off of it, which is, it's nice. It has a lot of linear torque, meaning that the acceleration, the speed at which you twist the handle and the pull you feel, feels pretty much the same throughout the rev range. Um, but every bike has a certain RPM that it sits at in which you get that most amount of jerk when you hit the throttle. Um, for this bike, it's 3,900 RPMs. I'm doing about 3,500 right now. But um, if I go a little faster and then kick the torque, it really picks up, starts to go. But it's nothing scary. But that's what uh, Triumphs are known for, is their low end torque. So we're about 3,900, here we go. It really picks up. And it sounds good. A lot of people were saying you need to get like a proper street bike. But the reason I don't have a proper street bike is because there's so much construction and gravel around here that it's just not fun. When your back tire slips on the main road because of gravel, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. I actually had a street bike. I had a Triumph 1050 Speed Triple, and that was my baby. I feel like that stuff over there on the ground, that stuff is everywhere and it bleeds out into the street. When you're on a street bike, it spins out your back tire and it's just not fun when you have that kind of power. It's scary. But to each their own, you know? I gotta bust out the drone or bring a camera bag with me one day so I can do a proper motor vlog instead of just these GoPro shots, but let's be honest, it looks pretty good anyways. All these houses around this area, around this lake, used to be affordable. Now they're all seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, million dollars plus because they have the, the mountain view and the lake view, but what they also get with that is the stink of that lake. And they also get the bugs. They get the mosquitoes and all that stuff. Like, it, it, it seems nice. You go out on your back deck and you enjoy your grill and whatever and look out at the lake and the mountains. And, and then you're getting stung with mosquitoes five seconds later. So it's like really idealistic to live in these neighborhoods, but practically it, it stinks. It smells like sewage and bugs. <laughs> Just look at all the bugs on my little fly screen above my speedometer clean this thing off. Something else I wanted to mention real quick was um, people often say, you know, Josh, all you do is complain. You just whine. You never give any solutions. Tell us what to do. Do we become a YouTuber like you? And it's like, nah, dude. That's just what ended up working out for me. For some people, they need to start putting their foot down at work more. For some people, they need to get a new job. For some people, they need to go their own way. All I'm trying to do is just bring food for thought, get people thinking about it. Let's start the conversation. Let's talk about things we're not supposed to talk about because you'll lose your job otherwise. I'm 55, I don't want to go 55. There's a lot of wind pressure. All right, let's just 
show right here. But yeah, um, I don't have all the answers for everyone. I really don't. Like everyone has their own interests, everyone has their own hobbies, and the best thing to do is try to find your interest, what the market wants, and combine those two together. But there is no one solution for everyone. I mean, there is for people like me, but again, that's for people like me. For everyone like me, probably go your own way. Great worker, shitty employee, me, sound like me. And it's probably not best for you to work a job or go the corporate route. People that have a job they truly enjoy and they want to get paid for that, well, I mean, respect your boundaries because they won't. I mean, they, they'll say they will, but they'll take more and more and more and, you know, soon that extra hour, one night becomes a habit and then next thing you know you're working weekends and soon after that you just have no semblance of work-life balance anymore so you gotta start putting your foot down saying no and then if that doesn't work time to get a new job I'll show you what this bike looks like here at some point that hill. God, these tires are not good for rocky roads like this. So I'm doing it for the YouTube. Alright. Here we go, boys. Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. Got the aero exhaust. I put these fog lights on. Got the grill for the light. Fly screen. Hand covers. It's got hand warmers. And then uh, we got the got the sack. So you don't care anything. Tank pads. Undercarriage. Uh, crash bars. This is I don't know. I love my motorcycles. I don't know what to tell you YouTube. If you enjoyed this rant, leave a like, subscribe. I'll try to get the drone out and bring a proper camera next time so we can really get that cinematic footage because look at this. Um, thanks for showing up. See you in the next one. Real quick, there's no video for this, but I just thought I'd let you, uh, you'd hear it roar here. Listen to that. Hold on. This is what this is what it sounds like. All right. I just had to I just had to share it because I love the way it sounds. All right. See you guys in the next one.